All right, folks, we're going to do another projectile problem. And here goes. A rescue plane drops a package of supplies to some stranded hikers. The plane is traveling horizontally at 40 meters per second at a height of 100 meters above the ground. How far from the drop point does the package strike the ground? How much time does this take? What's the package's vertical velocity at the moment of impact? And what is the angle? So we're going to start out with a picture. Here is the ground. Here is my airplane flying like so. Um, the package is dropped out of the payload doors and it's going to go whee like that. Now, the airplane is going forward with a velocity of 40 meters per second. And at the moment the package is dropped, it has the same speed as the aircraft because it was inside the airplane. So that is the horizontal velocity of the package. The airplane is 100 meters above the ground. That is my Y, my vertical displacement. And I want to know how far from the drop point does the package strike the ground. And that is my X. So when you're dealing with a projectile, what you do is you have two columns of data, your horizontal information and your vertical information. So on the horizontal side, I know the horizontal velocity of the package is 40 meters per second. I am looking for X, horizontal displacement. I do not know how much time is in the air. Vertically, it travels 100 meters. And I know that it is dropped from the airplane. So its original vertical velocity is going to be zero. Original vertical velocity is zero. The minute it leaves the aircraft, it's going to have an acceleration of gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared. That's going to be accelerated and sped up. And I don't know time. But I do know that the times are going to be the same. When the package hits the ground, it's going to stop moving. So whatever time I find here will be the same time on the horizontal side. So the first thing I'm going to do, actually, is I am going to find um, time. All right, that's the first thing I'm going to do is find time. Now, that is not necessarily what Part A asks. They actually ask this in Part B. It is perfectly acceptable to do things out of order. Be a little wild and rock and roll. You can do that. So if I look at these variables, the equation that comes to my mind is um, y is vot plus 1 half at squared. The original velocity is 0. All of that goes to 0. So vertical displacement is 1 half a t squared. And remember, you can use y or x, whichever one makes the most sense in your brain. And I'm going to solve for t. So I'm going to do this carefully because this is one of those calculations that seems to bamboozle people. So to solve for t, multiply both sides by 2. It's going to cancel the 1 half. To get rid of a, divide both sides by a. And to get rid of the square root, square root this side and square root of that side. So time is going to be the square root of two times the vertical displacement, y, divided by the acceleration of gravity, 9.8 meters per second squared. And when I do the math for that problem, time ends up being equal to 4.52 seconds. Let's take a moment and look at our units. I've got meters divided by meters per second squared. Meters divided by meters per second squared, and the whole ball of wax is under a square root. So if I take meters per second, whoops, meters invert and multiply, times second squared over meters, meters canceled, the square root of second squared is seconds. I'm looking for time. I've got time. Yoo-hoo! Life is good. So now that I know time on one side, the 4.52 seconds, I can then find x, my horizontal displacement. The only equation you can use on the horizontal side is horizontal velocity is x over t, because the horizontal velocity is steady or constant, if we can ignore air friction. And I'm looking for x, so x is going to be horizontal velocity times t. My horizontal velocity is 40 meters per second. My time is 
two seconds. And so my horizontal displacement x is going to be 181 meters. Yippee skippy. All right, let's keep it going. I've got two parts done, and the second part is what's the package's final vertical velocity at the moment of impact? So this object is going to have exactly the same vertical velocity here, final vertical velocity, as it will have as if I dropped it straight from 100 meters. So let's go find the final vertical velocity of this object. The original vertical velocity is 0. Gravity is 9.8. It's going to speed it up by the acceleration of gravity. And I know it's going to fall 100 meters downward. Downwards. So I'm going to use y. Now, I am going to choose to use vf squared is vo squared plus 2ay or x. And original velocity, to get rid of 2ay, I'm going to subtract that from both sides. So original velocity squared is going to be final velocity. What am I looking for? Final velocity. Oh, I'm doing way too much algebra. Sorry about that. Final velocity is going to be the square root of that other side. Sorry about that. I got, I was having way too much fun doing algebra. Okay, final velocity is going to be the square root of original velocity, which is 0, plus 2, 9.8, times the vertical displacement, 100. At this point in time, some people say, wait a minute, Mary, the ball, the package is falling down. Doesn't that mean I have to have a negative 9.8 meters per second squared? If you choose to have a negative 9.8 meters per second squared, that also means you must have a negative 100 because it's going down. That is, is its displacement. And those two negatives will cancel. So as long as you have motion only in one direction, you can keep everything positive. It's only when you have up and down motion that you have to define one positive and one negative. Now when I do this and I actually do the math, I am going to end up with 44.3 meters per second is final vertical velocity. The last part of the problem is asking this. When the package actually hits the ground, it is going to strike at some sort of an angle. Now, the angle that it hits the ground is going to be dependent upon not displacement. You cannot do a, a yx displacement triangle to find theta. You can't do that because this is coming in at a parabolic arc. So what's going to determine the angle of impact? Well, that is going to be a vector triangle that's a combination of the final vertical velocity and the horizontal velocity, velocity horizontal. And the combination of those two is going to give me my total velocity upon impact along with theta. So imagine that you've got somebody on the ground with a little radar gun and this package is coming in. This total velocity is going to be the speed that they would register on their little radar gun, how, packaged, how fast this package is going to impact the ground. But the problem only wanted to know the angle theta. So how are we going to do that? Well, if this is my angle, this is a right angle, this side is adjacent, this side is going to be my opposite, and tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent. My opposite side is my final vertical velocity, which we found up ahead above was 44.3 meters per second. My adjacent or horizontal velocity was 40 meters per second. So when I do the math and then hit inverse tangent or second tangent, theta ends up being 48 degrees. Now, how do you say that for clear communication? How I would say that is 48 degrees above horizontal. All right, hope that helps, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye.